All right, everyone, welcome to lesson two for strings, where we're going to talk about some basic functions and something called methods that we're going to learn for strings. So um, first of all, I'm going to talk about the string type. So string is something that we can convert other data into. So if we had integers, float, list, boolean, all of those, can we can turn that into a string. It will just trap a quotation mark around it. Right? So um, it will make it indexable and sliceable as well after we turn it into a string. So in this example here, five years set to 2017, right? We can get a string version of a year or make a variable by converting it to a string, right? And that helps us out because I can't index an integer. I mean, I can index an integer and it will give us a string. If I didn't convert it and just try to index it to 2017, it would give me an error. So that would be one nice use of converting something to a string. And it also helps us use some other uh, methods and function that we're going to learn. So let's learn some useful functions related to string. Okay. So if I if I I can use a length function on a string, it's just going to tell us how many um, characters are in. So if I did length hello, that's going to be five. The max is going to find the biggest character, while min finds the smallest character. So in hello, it's going to be o, in hello, it's going to be e for min and o for max. Okay. We can convert an int. We can convert a string to an integer. However, our string argument has to be a numeric value. Okay? And if it has a decimal, it's going to give us an error. Okay? Whereas with the float, right, if it's just an integer, it's going to be 3.0. If it's 3.14, it'll, it'll have no problem finding the 0.14 to make it a floating point value. And I went over those quickly because we have used them before, and they should be reviewed. But here are some new methods that we're going to learn. Not function. They're called methods. And I'm going to explain that now. All right. So what is a method and what is a return? Methods is a set of code that belongs to certain data or what we like to call object programming. So we're going to learn about strings and lists. And these data types have special methods that, are only, that only belongs to them. Usually we need a period to access these methods to use them. Okay. What does return mean? Return is when a certain method or functions have the ability to return a value after its operation. That, that's why when we use length, max, they return a value and we usually assign it to a variable or we just output it inside a print statement. Okay? And this is useful when we assign the result to a variable. Okay? These are all functions, length, max, min, int, float. Those are all built-in functions. And we talked about what built-in functions are. They're, they're provided by Python and they all return a value so that we can assign it to a result or print them in a print statement. Okay. So if I were to talk about methods, these are just uh, stuff like functions, but they belong to an object. So we're gonna have a variable, a string variable. Since it's a data type string, we're gonna use a period to access a method that it has, okay? Then give it whatever arguments it would need. So in this one, it's going to count how many times this argument exists inside this string, and it's gonna return a value, okay? Um, if we were to look for a certain string argument, it's going to look for it inside this one. We're going to say, hey, inside this string, find this argument. If you found it, it's going to give us the index. Okay? If not, it's going to return negative 1. And that's the big difference between find and index. Index will crash if this argument is not found, whereas find will just return us a negative 1. So they have two different error codes, I guess. So if we were to run an example, right? I have an example variable called of hello world. Okay, so that's a string data type. For the string data type, I'm accessing a method called count. And it's going to count how many E's I have. One. How many single case letters of L? One, two, three. So it's going to give us three. But if I'm looking for double, because we're looking for this double pattern, it only exists once. So it's going to give us one. And for result four, we're going to be finding D. It's all the way at the end. So index of 10. Find Z. Not found, negative one. If I were to find OR, which is right here, that's going to give us seven because at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right here, that's when that pattern starts. So when you give a um, string that's longer than one character, it's going to give you where it starts, the index where it starts, not, where it, not the index where it ends. And if we were to use index function, a method instead of define method, D, same thing. Z will produce an error and it will not go beyond that line. However, if we were to do index of or, we're also going to get the same answer. Okay. 
just big difference index when you can't find something it will give an error so you'll see the red lines on your python interpreter whereas find will give us a negative one to denote that it was able to find it let's talk about some status methods now okay these help us check what type of strings we got and what um, exists inside the string okay so first we have is alna right it's going to check if the string variable is only composed of alphabetical and numeric characters there's no spaces and no special characters and all these methods here we're talking about to return a value true or false so these are boolean based methods okay if we have variable name is alpha it's only going to check if it's alphabetical no spaces no numbers no special characters we can also check if all the characters are lowercase uppercase and if we can check if all the string values are digits of between zero to nine okay um so no spaces no special characters ignores any unicode majority of the time i recommend this check over using methods of is numeric or is just so i have these example variables here abc123 example 213 example 3 hello right so example was alnum true right it has alphabetical and or, or numeric uh, values example one is alpha is false because it has alphabetical characters but it also has numeric characters so that would evaluate to false okay example three lower no all everything's uppercase so it's false is upper true everything's uppercase we can do example two is digit because everything is numeric values instead of alphabetical values we get true whereas example one is digit evaluate if you wanted to, you can use this in your if statement, or you can assign it to different variables to help you solve string-based problems. The last method we're going to talk about today is string edit methods. So these are going to help us edit our string. Right? Variable name. We're going to capitalize. Okay. So if I wanted to capitalize the first letter of a string, I would I can say this string capitalized. Or remember, strings are immutable. So if you wanted to update that variable. With capitalize method on it, you have to say variable name is equal to variable name dot capitalize. Okay. Variable not, not lower, it's going to look at all the characters in the string and make it all lowercase, whereas upper, it's going to look at all of it and make it uppercase. Okay. Capital, that's the first letter. These two affects all the characters in the string. If I example hello world and capitalize, it's going to give us this with the capital H starting. If I want to example dot upper, it's going to make everything very excited, and we're going to get hello world. And lastly, if I want to say example dot lower, example is now hello world. And notice, I started with this variable example, and it's continuously being updated with each of our methods being run because I want to keep those changes. Okay, we're modifying them. Okay, and this is not all the methods that we're going to learn. I have a whole other slide set. We're going to go through a whole bunch of methods as well. Right, and if you can click this link here, you actually see a whole exhaustive list of methods that you can use in string as well. So today we talked about string typing, how we can convert different data types into string. We looked at useful functions that we can use for strings, and we learned what methods are and some of the basic methods that we can use to help us solve a string-based problem. Thank you for watching. Stay classy.